Hi there, I'm Christina Tidwell, registered nurse and holistic health and nutrition coach and founder of Live All with Christina. Um, and I wanted to come on today and talk to you guys about step two in the five steps uh, in eating for energy and getting rid of that 3 p.m. crash. So last week I talked about step one, which was um, mindfully eating three meals and two planned snacks throughout your day, or basically just bringing mindful and awareness to your food choices um, instead of just reactively going throughout your day eating anything that comes across your path or going for really long stretches of time without you know finding any food. So this is a really important first step in eating for energy. So let me know how it went for you, what came up for you, what you thought, um, where you were on this scale in the first place when you brought some mindful attention to it. And this doesn't mean that we need to constantly be thinking about where our next meal is coming from, although I know some of us probably like already do that. Um, but it actually means that if you bring some mindful attention and awareness, you know, just 10, 15 minutes at the beginning of your week to think about where you're going to get your snacks from, what meals you might plan out that, that um, week, and make a couple things um, on a Sunday, that you really don't have to think about it all as much, and it becomes way more automated and just something that is a part of you and a habit. So let me know how that went. Um, that's kind of the foundational step that we need for all the rest of the good stuff. So this week I want to talk about step two, which is diving deeper into the type of food that you want to be eating for these meals and snacks um, in order to eat for energy. So I think we're used to, um, you know, we're used to thinking about food in terms of calories, um, but I want to switch that around and think about the quality of the food and think about how food is going to fuel us for energy rather than just thinking about the calories. So I think we can all agree that food doesn't just go in one end and come out the other without affecting us, right? Like food comes in, uh, it's broken down, it's absorbed into our bloodstream and is used by our cells as information. So it affects us at a cellular level. And so I think inherently we know if we have 100 calories of Oreos versus 100 calories of salmon and veggies, yeah, they are the same, uh, you know, caloric, you know, number fuel wise, but in terms of how they're actually going to make us feel, how they're broken down and assimilated into our body is very different. So we want to focus on those foods that are going to give us the best fuel and the best energy and the best nutrition. Um, so, you know, for example, have you ever eaten a piece of toast for breakfast in the morning and, uh, you know, have found yourself hungry about 30 minutes later? So that is an example of a meal that's too heavy in those quick burning carbohydrates that causes a big um, blood sugar spike and a crash, and then this craving for more fuel. So if you added something onto that toast that had a little bit more protein or fat or a slower burning type of fuel, like almond butter or avocado uh, or good quality deli meat, that's going to give you the fuel that's going to... Um, you know, keep you full for longer and give you more sustained energy throughout the day and have a more even blood sugar rise and fall. So that's what we want. Um, so when specifically talking about blood sugar levels, it's really important to look at carbohydrates. So a lot of times when we think of carbs, we think of like pasta, breads, um, you, you, like chips and, and soda or candy, things like that. Um, but did you know that vegetables are also a source of carbohydrates as well? I didn't know that one for a really long time. Maybe you were ahead of me, but I didn't know. Um, and so whenever we eat a type of carbohydrates, whether it's like a cup of pure sugar or a plateful of vegetables, the molecules in that food are broken down as they are absorbed, and that impacts our blood sugar uh, levels and insulin uh, release as well. So some carbs like vegetables or 100% whole grains like, um, you know, oats or types of rice or quinoa cause these smaller, more gradual rises in blood sugar, whereas these refined sugary carbohydrates like bagels or muffins or chips or what we typically think of as like carbs um, cause these higher spikes in blood sugar um, and and, uh, and insulin, insulin release then too. So to balance blood sugar, it's a really good idea to eliminate refined carbohydrates and sugars from your diet completely so you don't have these big ups and downs. Um, and so that is, is things that we, you know, we think of these really sugary drinks or overly processed foods. Um, and we wanna focus on foods that are gonna give us a more even energy release. So 
if we're eliminating these, you know, uh, carbohydrates and refined sugars, what do we include? And I want to make it really, really simple. The foods that you want to focus on are just real whole foods and lots of vegetables. So by real whole foods, I just mean foods that are closest to their original state when they came from the earth, that they haven't been overly processed. So if you don't recognize, um, if you're looking at ingredients and you don't recognize any words or half the things on there, they're long chemical names, or there's more than five ingredients, usually it's something that's been changed quite a bit from its, its original state. So we want to focus on these just real whole foods, which is you know, all kinds of vegetables, uh, you know, the starchier vegetables like sweet potatoes or yams, plantains, but also, you know, all kinds of leafy greens, um, any kind of vegetable. Um, also good quality uh, meat, uh, poultry, fish, eggs, uh, nuts and seeds, good quality oils and fats, um, and whole grains if you tolerate those too. I incorporate some gluten-free whole grains like rice or quinoa or gluten-free oats from time to time, but those aren't necessarily a staple of the way I eat. But if we're focusing just on this real whole foods, it's amazing the kind of magic that can happen really just by focus using this as our rule that we dictate everything from. Um, and it's going to make a really, really big difference in your energy level. So we want to focus on food as fuel, not just food as calories that we're putting into our body that we need to burn off. So thinking about, you know, the different, um, different vegetables and foods that contain more nutrients than others. So these uh, refined carbohydrates that are, you know, more like breads or pastas or chips and sodas don't have a lot of nutrients, good nutrient dense, you know, density where we're getting these minerals and all the nutrients from the vegetables. So when we're focusing on this fuel, we want to really think of it as that we are fueling ourselves with nutrients. And and so that's from, you know, things like vegetables, but also from from fruits in moderation. Fruits do have natural sugar, so we don't want to go crazy with them, um, but we can definitely include those too. And all of these real whole foods. So let me know what you think about that. It's a really simple uh, way to just sort of think about our food choices on a day-to-day -day basis without getting too bogged down but it, it will make a really 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 big difference in your energy levels if you are consistently prioritizing nutrient dense food and real whole foods um, one other thing I wanted to talk about which is something that uh, someone brought to my attention in the last video um, was cravings and when we're talking about this 3 p.m. energy crash Cravings are a big deal because we get those, uh, you know, those cravings for sugars and chocolate and coffee and caffeine and these quick energy fixes. And cravings are really, I could probably do a whole workshop on cravings, maybe I will, but cravings are really important to pay attention to and interesting because they give you good insight uh, into an area of your life or body that may be out of balance. So for example, if you're thirsty, you're craving water, you're dehydrated, you need some fluids. Um, it's not always as simple as that, but it's definitely uh, an area where you your body is telling you you're out of balance if you're having these really strong sugar cravings. So just by doing the first step, so mindfully preparing some food so you have good quality food with you and you're not going for really long times without eating or you're not just eating those really uh, sugary refined processed foods because they're there is going to help you so you have that even sustained energy and you you feel more balanced and you're not going to have those crazy sugar cravings also just prioritizing real whole foods and eliminating those refined sugars and carbohydrates is going to give you a lot of stability so you're going to reduce those sugar cravings as well and then it becomes less of those cravings controlling you and you being able to mindfully decide, I think I want some chocolate or I think I want a little treat or want something really nice this afternoon. So you are you are dictating it rather than it controlling you or your body controlling you. So it it just takes, you know, a week or two of kind of really prioritizing these two steps to uh, to get rid of those cravings, but keep paying attention to them because they they mean something and they mean that your body is asking you for something that it's not necessarily getting. Um, so I hope that helps answer your craving question. I could talk a lot more about it. So let me know in the comments if you have other questions. Um, and next week for step three, I'm gonna go through uh, the composition of each meal so that it is 
balanced. And balanced is something we may have heard of before, but I want to talk about it in sort of a different context. So stay tuned for that one. Um, and let me know how these first two steps are going for you. Thanks.